Welcome back guys and in this lesson we're going to start hooking up these IV outlets and IV actions so that we can actually start displaying data and working with the app a little bit. So uh, before we do that though one thing I want to do is do some prep work and get ourselves ready by being proactive and creating the model that we're going to need to use when we actually decide to start implementing local storage. So basically what I mean by that is we should create a struct that represents the name and age data and we could just call this struct a person so let's go ahead and start by doing that let's create a new group let's call this group models uh, let's move the folder down here and then we're going to create a new file within that it's going to be a swift file and we're going to call it person and this is going to be a struct again it's going to be called person and it's going to adopt this protocol right here called Codable. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what the Codable protocol means here in a little bit, but for now, go ahead and just do what I did, add the Codable protocol, and then in the next lesson when we start working on local storage, I'll explain a little bit more about what that means. For now, let's just assume that this behaves like any other class or struct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a property called name, and that's gonna be of type string. And we're gonna add another property that's gonna be called age, and that's also gonna be of type string. Um, and these are obviously going to represent those text inputs that are on the view controller. So let's come back to this here in a second. Let's go back to the storyboard. Let's open up the assistant editor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start connecting these IV outlets. And of course, I, it wouldn't be a day in my life if Xcode didn't decide to be a pain and not open up properly. I'm gonna pause the video, restart Xcode, and I'll be right back. All right, so I got this fixed. I don't know why you're you're gonna for some reason whatever release of Xcode is out right now is just being a major pain when it comes to the assistant editor uh, and the storyboard. So, um, anyways, if you have that same problem, restart Xcode. Ninety nine percent of the time, that's gonna solve your problem. So, okay, so now that I did that, we've got the assistant editor open. What we're gonna want to do now is go ahead and connect all of our uh, outlets. So let's start with this label up here. Let's connect this and let's call this name label. Uh, let's connect this label below that and let's call this age label. Then we're going to connect this text field right here and we're going to call it name text field. Again, making sure that we're holding that control key and dragging into the view controller and then letting go. And then we can put uh, the name of our item. So this is going to be the age text field. Okay, now that we have all these hooked up, the last thing that we need to do is hook up the submit button IB action. So make sure that whenever you connect this, that we're getting a connection type of action right here. And we're gonna put on submit button tap. And this is where we are going to update the view. Okay, before we do that though, the reason that we made that person struct was so that we could put the data inside there and display the data on the view controller from that struct. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a property within this view controller called person. And it's gonna be just like this, var person equals, and we're gonna set a default value here. So whenever we first load this view controller, what we're gonna to wanna to do is preload it with a person that represents the data that we see inside the storyboard right now. So world being the name and 5,460,000,000 being the age. So to do that, let's go ahead and put person the name is going to be world and the age is going to be five, four, six, zero, 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 zero. That's a big number. Um, okay, so now we've got it preloaded with that and obviously it's going to infer that the data type is person based on the fact that we set it to be a person struct. So um, now that we have that set up, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is add two functions. Let's add one function that's going to update the UI and let's add another function that's going to update the text fields. Okay, now what we're gonna to wanna to do inside the update UI function is we're gonna to wanna to update those labels. So we're gonna say name label dot text equals hello, and then we're going to inject the name of the person. So person dot name. And then we're also going to want to set the uh, age uh, label. So we're gonna say age label dot text equals you are, and then we're gonna inject that age, person dot age years old. 
Okay, so that's all that we need to do there in that update UI function. In the update text fields function, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to preset them because presumably we're going to call this function inside view did load, which we can actually do right now. So we can call that update UI function when the view loads and we can call that update text fields function when the view loads. So when this loads, we want to go ahead and preset the values inside the text fields that we're looking at. So to do that, we're going to say uh, name text field dot text equals person dot name and then we're going to say age text field dot text equals person dot age and if my notifications would stop bugging me um okay so yeah we've got that set now uh now that we've done that let's go ahead and run the application to make sure that we're getting the effect that we're looking for so when we first load up the application it should say hello world and Ah, there we go. And it's looking like it did exactly what we wanted it to do. We've got the name label up here, which says hello world. Uh, these are updating properly. And then both of our text fields are updating properly as well. So the next thing that we need to do is make sure that when we tap the submit button, whatever values we have inside our text fields are getting set properly. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to want to do is when the submit button is tapped, the thing that we're going to want to do is check the values to make sure that they're not empty inside the text fields. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say if let name equal name label or sorry, name text field dot text. And we also want to make sure it's not empty. So let's say name does not equal empty string. And then we're going to want to say let age equal age text field dot text. And we want to make sure that age does not equal an empty string. And actually to clean this up a little bit to make things look a little bit cleaner, we can actually return these to new lines and just make it a little bit easier to read. When you have like multiple conditions like this, sometimes it looks better to actually break them out into new lines. So it's a little bit easier to read. So now that we have that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set our self dot person. This is this property up here equal to a new person struct and we're going to set the name equal to the name that we just unwrapped and the age that we just unwrapped and after that's done we're going to want to call that update ui function so that it can get those values and set them properly now if we cannot unwrap those things properly then what we want to do is just set our person equal to that default person so we're just going to copy this up here whoops we're going to copy that up there and make sure that our person is set to the default one. Uh, actually, regardless of whether or not we can unwrap it, we're going to want to update the UI either way. So let's go ahead and cut that from there and paste it down here. So regardless of what person we set it to, we're going to want to update the UI regardless. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's run our application again. And now if we go ahead and change this to Cole and change the age to 25, and we click submit, it's gonna say, hello, Cole, you're 25 years old. And no matter what we change it to, it's always gonna work. Now, the reason that I did this check right here to make sure it's not empty is because if we remove all this stuff, I would just want us to default to the old values instead of saying, hello, empty, and you are blank years old. I just want it to say the default values. So if I, we have nothing, then it's gonna do this. So now that we've got this far, we've got the basic fundamentals of the application working. So the next thing that we're going to want to do in the next lesson is actually implement local storage. It's not going to be nearly as difficult as you might think it is. It's going to be really simple, really fun, really cool. And again, you can use this all over and over again in all of your applications. So I will see you in the next lesson.